A proper algorithm has decisions, but no choices. But sometimes the method for making the decisions might not be obvious, or we might not know how we'll make the decisions. We can circumvent this by using a non-deterministic finite automaton. For example, consider a language whose elements consist of all the strings that contain three consecutive zeros. We can describe these as, and we can construct a finite automaton to recognize the language. But intuitively, if a string is in the language, it will start with a bunch of ones and zeros, eventually have three zeros, and then a bunch more ones and zeros. This suggests a representation like the one shown. Our string will start with a bunch of zeros and ones, there's a loop, but eventually we'll get one, two, three consecutive zeros, which puts us in an accepting state, although we could have additional zeros and ones after. The key difference here is that our transition function delta is no longer a function, since if we're in a state, then either zero will take us back to A, or zero will take us to B. We'll say this is non-deterministic, since we can't determine if we'll go to A or B. Intuitively, a non-deterministic finite automaton accepts a string if some path based on the string leads to an accepting state. Thus, we'll introduce the following idea. A non-deterministic finite automaton, NFA, is a five-tuple where Q, sigma, and Q0 and A have the same meaning as they do for finite automaton, but instead of outputting a state, our transition function outputs a set of states where this notation refers to the set of subsets of our states. Now, since our transition function could be a set of possible destination states, we'll also need to modify our definition of delta star to be, and informally, delta star is every possible state that can be reached using our string. So, for example, for the non-deterministic finite automaton shown, let's find delta of state 0 and delta star of state 0, 0, 1. So, if we're in state A and receive the symbol 0, then we could go to A or we could go to B. And so, delta of A0 is the set A, B. For delta star, we note, first of all, that delta of A0 is the set A, B. So the next symbol in the string is 0. So if we're at A, we could go to the set A or B. But if we're at B, we could go to C. And so delta star of A0, 0, 0 is anything in the set A, B, or C. Now the next symbol is 1. So if we're starting at A, B, or C, where could we go if we receive symbol 1? Now note that only A can handle a 1, so the only place we could go is back to A. And so delta star of A, 0, 0, 1 is back to the single state A. It's worth noting that if we had a finite automaton for this language, then it would also evaluate 0, 0, 1 as A back to the starting point, since we would be no closer to having three consecutive zeros than before. In some sense, delta star embodies the hope that a string will take us to an accepting state, which might be crushed by harsh reality. Now, we'll also need to modify our definition of acceptance, since delta star usually produces a subset of Q. So, we'll say that a non-deterministic finite automaton accepts a string if delta star Q naught X intersect the set of accepting states is non-empty. In other words, there is a path to an accepting state using the string X. Let's find a non-deterministic finite automaton to recognize the language consisting of strings that have a pair of zeros, 
followed by, possibly some distance later, a pair of ones. So a string accepted by this NFA would begin with a bunch of zeros and ones, include zero zero, have more zeros and ones, include one one, and then end with some more zeros and ones. And so we might represent it this way. We have our initial state. We loop a bunch of times with zeros and ones, but eventually we'll get one, two, zeros then loop a bunch of time with zeros and ones, but eventually get one, two consecutive ones, which is our accepting state, and we might loop a bunch of times with zeros and ones.